Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to Learning Game Development. This time we're going to look at a little bit of animation in Unity. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well and you can stay up to date with everything I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I'm actually going to head back to the Jimmy scene, which has those red cubes. And I'm going to zoom into that cube right here. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the script that's attached to it. And we're going to animate this particular cube. Now, when I say animate, a lot of animation in Unity is very primitive. It's very basic. So if you're creating or you want something that has strong animations, you're better off getting that kind of stuff um, from whatever modeling software it's created in. So, for example, if you've created you know, a little blobby monster or something, it's probably not best to animate it in Unity itself. It's better to animate it inside the 3D modeling software. That's not to say that you can't animate it inside Unity, because you can. You can create any kind of animation that you want to if you play around with it. You can also modify the animations if you need to. So, for example, if you've brought in something from uh, Mixamo and you want to modify that animation a little bit, you can do it this way. So, to get the animation tab, you can click the three little dots anywhere you can be up here in the hierarchy in the inspector down here on the project window and you click on add tab and you just need to click on animation and that will bring up this little window down here and you can see a little bit of a timeline going on here and that's generally how we create that animation now i'm not going to go too much in depth as i keep saying i have some videos on my channel which go much more in depth with animation than this this is just to help you get started so let's have that cube selected and then what we can do is we can click on create animation clip and then call it whatever you want save it wherever you want and then all you would need to do is hit that record button and you'll see this turn a darker red that means we are now in record mode the most important thing to note in all of this is the original position and rotation and scale of this particular object we need to set a keyframe so let's say I want to change the scale constantly, just constantly move that scale, you know, so it looks like it's pulsating maybe. So what I like to do is on the very first keyframe at zero, I would normally set it as zero and then set it back to one on all three of those, just to be sure. So that now starts like that. So we're working in 60 frames a second. That's just how this works. But you can also click in various positions inside here. If you want to, you can select the frame right there. So let's go 60, for example, not 6,050, 60. And then let's change the scale to, let's do it on the X and Z of two and two. And if we then go to frame, let's say 120, we could set that back to one. And one and what that will do is it will repeatedly play that animation so it looks like that cube is pulsating so you can play around with the settings whether it's position rotation scale color anything you want to within the animation and it will set a little keyframe right there and you can see it's all set along here with the little dots that represents where they are so if we press the record button once again and if we press play i'm hoping we can see it in the game view ah we can see it just there but if we go to the scene view we can see how that animation is working on there so we're animating that cube and making it look like it's pulsating and we can also modify all of this so if we go on the cube again and if we go to uh, the animation just here so if i untick that loop time that means the animation is only going to play the once there's not a lot more we can do with it after that. You can see it's done that and it's now stopped. So unticking loop time means that you can animate something like a gun that would only fire the once. It wouldn't constantly fire unless you wanted it to. And this kind of stuff is useful for when you want to create a script that when you press, for example, the mouse button or press a key, it will animate just that once. Now, animations, like I say, can be very 
versatile, but they can be very primitive at the same time. So let's say we want to modify this animation. So if we press the record button once again, and let's go to frame 30, and let's say we want to change the scale of the Y to four. And let's say we want to change the scale of the Y again here to one. So pressing play once again, we should be able to see the changes that we've made like that. So going back to project and going back to the animation, let's click loop time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide the canvas. I'm going to turn it off just so as we can see this animation working a little better. So let's untick there and then press play. And we should be able to see this crazy animation now occur. Cool. And as I said, we can use this in so many different ways. Um, it's, you know, it's so easy to play around with this animation and do different things depending on what you want it to do. Like for example, this plane, we could make that change. We could make it rotate. We could do all kinds of different things if we wanted to. Uh, but the very basics of animating are just that. You would select, in this case, we've just changed the scale or whatever else and just played around with it. So let's say, for example, let's change this once again. And we'll start with a rotation on the Y at zero. So let's set that as one and set it as zero just to make sure we do set that keyframe. You just have to make sure that it is set here and does have that keyframe there. So let's say by frame 120 that the rotation is now going to be 90 degrees. So it's basically rotated 90 degrees over the course of 120 frames, which matches each of this. And we can see that all the keyframes are being set. So it's always good to check that we do have the correct section here and the keyframes set just there. Press the record button to stop recording. And if we press play, we should be able to see that extra animation occur. Cool. That looks weird. So like I say, animation is best done, to be more advanced, it's best done inside the modeling software that whatever object is created in. But creating simple, cool animations like this in Unity, you can actually create really unique animations just by doing this. And it's something that you probably should play around with to some degree to understand what the animation does. And I know that's very simple, but it's just coming to terms with what you can do in Unity. So until the next video, thanks very much for watching guys.